So I'm going to record this because there's some folks aren't able to make it. Um, I'm going to share my screen and I'll bring up the case study. Okay, let me find the case study and there you go. Can you see it there? It says description and instructions. Okay, so let's read through the case study with um, good old Damon. He's, um, before we get started, let me ask you this question. Um, what age can a student with a significant or with a disability attend uh, the K-12 environment until what age? 21. I'm sorry? 21. Right, through their 21st birthday. So that means, say they turn 21 on um, September 1st, they can go through that whole year and uh, finish up. So it's through their 21st birthday. So that's an important concept for us to remember when we're looking at this. Also, let's be thinking about stuff with kids with these significant disabilities um, what's the purpose of special education? It's to provide, it's just like any other education, but if you read the first sentence in IDEA, it's to prepare them for further education, employment, and our independent living. So that's the purpose of special ed. And when we start looking at kids with significant disabilities, to me, I was a special ed director for many years. And one of the things that I did is that when we had a kid like Damon in our, in our district, we didn't wait until their 16th birthday to start working with them for transitioning to adult life. We started, we backed that up to like maybe middle school or earlier and started thinking how can we how can we transition them out into the real world for further educate education independent living and employment what can we do so that's so that's just having pre-planning and thinking ahead but that's that's just something i did as a special ed director so it's just kind of a, one of those things so here is damon he's 18 years old he's attending and and that's okay that he's attending the neighborhood high school, correct? Because it's through the 21st birthday. He is currently enrolled in 10th grade. Um, that's where he's, because think about this. He's, he's backed up, probably was um, in middle school until like he was 15 or 16 and then made the transition on, on there. And so he's like in 10th grade. That's his enrolled grade level. Um, he has an obtained IQ score of 49. Um, a, uh, he's using the extended content standards. So he's taking alternative testing, right? Um, he receives daily instruction in functional reading and communication, math and science. He's involved in a vocational daily living schools training his coursework is delivered in individual and small group settings in the special education classroom, except for digital communications. Um, he's in a CTE course for that. Uh, so we, we move down. Not only does he have a uh, intellectual disability, you could definitely say he does have an intellectual disability, right? When you read through the, the uh, issues, he has concomitant uh, adaptive behavior skills deficits, correct? Self-help, uh, communication, learning, et cetera. Those are, we could, on the, like on the Vineland. Uh, he also has spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy. That means that he is very involved cerebral palsy. He's uh, unable to walk, so he's in a wheelchair. And, um, and he uses a lot of PT. Um, 
Let's see. He also is using a GoTalk uh, augmentative communication system. Um, and he does have seizure disorder. So with all this going on, uh, what disability category are, would you like, think that he needs to be carried under? I think multiple disabilities with the orthopedic impairment and the intellectual disability. Right, because those are expected, and plus the, the um, seizure disorder, uh, but it could be, that's could be modified or, or uh, accommodated through uh, medication. So yeah, the, the, uh, the two specific ones that would uh, go forever would be the intellectual disability and orthopedic impairment. So definitely meets the multiple disabilities piece. So as we read through this, uh, you can even start thinking, um, what would you do with a child that is 12 in your class, in your district, and has these things? So you have all this information. So let's go back up to what I'm expecting you to do. Um, so number one, what category or categories of disability does Damon demonstrate? You guys answered that and explain it and say that he has an intellectual disability and orthopedic impairment that together cause him to have a educational need for specially designed instruction, correct? Wouldn't you say that? The two together are more than what ID or orthopedic impairment by themselves would be able to provide. Okay. Um, what are some educational needs? So you can pick up from the case study some educational needs. What are some things that he needs? And let's, I want to touch real quickly on educational needs. Are educational needs just academic or are they broader? Okay, so if they're broader than just math, reading, writing and the other subject areas we're talking about um, about health issues we're talking about uh, physical issues emotional issues maybe even behavioral um, we're looking also at uh, career and technology issues so those are some of the things, those are educational needs that this young man will need, correct? Uh, life skills, he probably doesn't have uh, able to toilet himself, but he can be on a schedule and maybe use his communication device to say he needs to go to the restroom or he needs to follow a schedule or something that would take him to the restroom, uh, get him bathed, get him dressed, those kind of things that could be done on a schedule and have uh, some routines in place for him. But uh, life skills, et cetera. Um, uh, vocational skills, such as uh, when we think of vocational um, issues, it's not only uh, work, but uh, uh, play time and free time activities, what can, things that he needs to do and learn on those. Those could be educational needs also. Uh, so there's, there's a ton of educational needs. And then we can identify related services that he needs. Does he need to have a um, physical therapist? Okay, so that's a, that would be one. How about an occupational therapist? Very likely especially for, uh, for um, free time activities and, and um, et cetera. Um, what do, you, do you think you might need a, um, a licensed nursing care? Week. These are all the things that are due for them. In the licensed week. nursing care is possible. You know, so you could go on and it's not an exhaustive list. I just want you to look at the issues that's in the case and identify things that would go with the educational needs and what related services that would look like. 
And then you would explain why and say, in the case, I saw blah, 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 and he needed a physical therapist because of his, um, his spastic cerebral palsy. He needed a uh, lysing nursing care, possibly due to the, the tonic clonic seizure oh issues. He uh, get up off the table. Could be needed. Um, you know, whatever that you identify. If it flips one more time, it, I take your your butts. Pull it back and into. Get them back for a long time. Please. A long time. So, so because you're uh, not listening, you're being so sassy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Somebody, you need to somebody, be sassy. somebody needs to <laughs> unmute. Uh, someone needs to mute. There you go. All right. So you just, I just want you to identify. I don't want you to overthink this. And that's the main thing. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. That's what right. That's, great. That's, <laughs> that's important. And because think about this as you go through reading, oh, let's see, uh, let's just pull one thing out here. Um, Damon has little intelligible speech other than single words and yes and no responses, but within the classroom he used uh, an I talk to to communicate simple needs and choices and, and is learning to use a go talk 20, a much more advanced um, OGCOM device. So who, what services does he need for this specific thing? Does he need, and it says he's receiving speech therapy, but does he need uh, augmentative communication training for these items? Very likely. So it might need more than just the two, uh, two times a week that he's receiving the speech therapy. Does that make sense? Yes. So it might need. Dr. Okay. Cabot, is there a place that, uh, or a site that will help us know so like some of the services that you're talking about, I know some about, but some of them I don't know much about. So is there a place we can go find the people that provide services? You know, uh, related services are one of these really interesting things because there is no exhaustive list of related services. You know that. This, that list could go on for eons and eons and eons. Um, because it just, when you have to look at the need and see if that has an educational relationship for that service, you, you're just going to have to go and, and it's like one of these things, there's not a place that has them all. I would Google, uh, various related services and, uh, say like, like music therapy is a related service. And does it have an educational basis or not? But um, say like you're looking for the, uh, this specific, specific thing with Damon, I would look up, he might need to use GoTalk 20 in uh, ordering at a restaurant. So would that be extended services? Would that be in-home training? Would that be what? In-home training is a related service. So, and a lot of times our in-home training that we did in our district wasn't necessarily at home, but it was out and about in society. So they could learn that. Does that make sense? So you just, I would just start say, okay, here's something that I don't know anything about. I'm going to look it up and you do a search. Nobody, you know, that would be awesome if somebody could put together some things that start a database that could find that. Um, I did that years ago at, in a class where I had, you find at your district, the related services in the community that you could uh, connect to and how that would uh, benefit you as a, a, a teacher in the classroom. So where you live, the service, and what it is can be different, uh, crazily different, if you know what I mean. Um, 
I'm actually struggling with one of the more clear cut parts is the, the graduation and the return to school. Like there's no information on whether he's completed his IEP, what credits he has, none of that. So okay. the most clear cut part seems to be the most difficult for me. Okay, so, um, so here it is, this is saying, let's read this question. So let's analyze the question. Fully explain how Damon may, Okay, is that saying that he will, or is it saying how, what could he do, what could happen if he meets the criteria to return to school? What would you need to do? So you go into the, remember how I had you look at the graduation stuff and how a student can walk, but return to school after graduating? What are the requirements for that? So then you talk about this is, and take out of the case, these are the things that would meet that criteria for him to return to school after graduating. Does that help answer that? And I didn't get to see who was talking at the time that asked that question. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about it. But it, I mean, how do you determine what graduation plan he's graduating through if you have no information about the stuff and in the graduation plan? So let's think about this. Is he going to graduate on the uh, traditional plan, the regular plan, general plan? No, but all of them require him to meet his IEP, which we have no information about. Okay. So, but that's not, okay. Uh, let's look at the question again. So he has to, what does he have to do? What must he do? to meet the criteria of being able to return to school. You don't have to have all the information in the case study. All I'm asking you is, what would he have to meet in order to return to school? But number six says, what will he graduate under? And that one we can't answer. Yeah, you can. Okay, I'll look for more details. Think about it. Look at the, let's look at the graduation plans. Let's go to, um, the, the uh, new tab. You look on the frameworks, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's where I'm going. I'm pulling it up so it's on here. So let's go to the framework. Let's go to the frameworks. Let's look under graduation. Down here. So would he, when you read through this, does he meet, would he meet the criteria of the foundation high school program? No. No, he couldn't meet that because number one, is he in all general education courses? No. No. Two, is he a student taking uh, special education classes? Yes. Yes. So then he can't be under the foundation high school program. Um, so does it demonstrate mastery of the required state standards or the LEA standards? by traditional methods, no. Um, let's see. If, would he meet the distinguished achievement recommended or minimum high school programs, plans, any of those? Would he, could he meet master the state Teaks, could this student master him? Or is he going to be um, taking alternative assessments and meeting the alternative curriculum? Which would he meet? Likely the alternative curriculum. Right, so you're making some assumptions. You have good information to think that he would not uh, meet uh, distinguished or recommended or minimum high school plans that he would be under the alternative um, pieces. 
he could successfully complete the IEP and meet one of the following. Um, and very likely he no longer meets, he'll age out. Because he'll stay through his 21st birthday. So he could walk, and this is where this came in, because I remember years ago, we were wanting kids at 18 to walk with his class. So he could walk at 18, but there was this whole argument that once he walked, he couldn't return. And now that's all changed. That age of um, eligibility must be through the 21st birthday kind of a thing. That um, So he would very likely meet the criteria to return to school after he walked, if they wanted him to walk. Um, uh, Dr. Cabot? Yes. Under that category that you're showing us now, does yes. it state specifically which type of diploma he'll receive if he does go back to high school? You know, in Texas, it's kind of funny. Uh, what kind of diplomas do we have? Do you know? I, I'm, de I'm a new Texan. So I'm we don't not have one diploma. <laughs> we don't have all these things where it says certificates of attendance and participation. Uh, these things are we have a high school diploma. All this other information is in their transcripts. The diploma is a diploma. It just says you graduate. Texas is different than any other state. In that. Okay, so that that makes sense. So it's regardless of, I guess, the process, the transcripts are what is describing his achievement in right. high school, not right. the paper. Right, because when you look at the, there's certain codes and say the code is one, two, three, four, five, six. There's numbers in those codes that tell you if that was a general education classroom or a modified course. and. And that's important for the distinguished plan, because if you have a student that takes a modified course that might start off with six, five, four, three, two, one, and that's indicating a modified course, then the student could not receive distinguished on the transcripts because he was in a modified class. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And for, I guess, uh, maybe, not this student particularly, but for grad, um, employment purposes, can the students say they've graduated high school? Oh yeah, he would say. So that. even if their transcripts might show modified or something. Like correct, that. correct. He still graduated high school. It's kind of like you. you're welcome. Years ago, remember, you know, we have a uh, we have two grading systems in in Texas in a sense, we have the four point scale for people that are not in a, an AP placement classes. And then you have the six point scale for people that are in AP, correct? You get two additional uh, percentage. That's why people can graduate, graduate with a um, grade point average of 5.23 something another. Okay, years ago, there was this whole big brouhaha saying that wasn't that wasn't quite fair and so they which it is fair now the law is all changed but we were having so they went back to just a 4.0 scale right so you have all these students in special ed on ieps and they they're getting uh, gpas of 4.0 could they be valedictorian If you had a 4.0 scale, yes, they could be. And that, and that was the big problem. But by adding the two additional points for AP classes, you can add two, but you cannot take away. So you couldn't say that this student, because they were in special ed, couldn't have a 4.0, they could only have a 3.0. That can happen. But with AP, because you're adding two, you can have a six point grade scale. And that took care of that whole issue of grading 
for students with as IEPs. Make sense? Does that make sense? I, I will find the uh, the find the letter um, and send it to you guys. There's the Department of Ed wrote it and send it out about that. I'll find so that. Letter. Was was that because uh, they did not want students that had uh, a four point and but they were taking say easier classes. They didn't right. want them to be valedictorian. I mean, right. I'm just putting it out there. That's well, that's they didn't earn they they're what they're saying is that to be a valedictorian or whatever at first class rankings, it was more about class rankings. The class rankings is based on the six point scale of those taking AP courses, and that way they get the in the ranking. I'll, I'll, the, I'll find the letter and I'll send it to you guys and it'll explain it better than I did, but you can add to, but you can't take away. Because then that's becomes discriminatory when you take away. Um, boy, I had that in my previous computer. I, I'll find it. Okay. Um, so let's go back to that question about graduation. Let's. So what graduation plan do you think Damon's going to graduate through? Do you think he's going to age out? Yeah, he's going to age out because he's not going to um, meet all the needs. Uh, and he will no longer meet age eligibility requirements and he'll age out, okay? So that is, that's very likely what he'll do. Okay. Let me get that pulled back up. What else? Um, because you can rule out, you can rule out all the other ones and explain that it's very likely that he's not going to meet the requirements of having a full time employment, um, uh, live independently, or um, attend a, a uh, trade school further education. Okay, what else about this are you needing to work through? And I do wanna tell you guys that this is the, um, I'm taking notes on this because we uh, are moving away from the, the, fi the final objective quiz and moving to the case study quiz. So. We'll, uh, we'll fix the issues. So I need to address six, that will, and seven before we um, launch it officially, because you guys are the guinea pigs. And I appreciate that. So I need to fix those. I have a question on the Vinland. On the Vinland, okay. Uh huh. Yeah. The fine line. Um, are we supposed to print that teacher form? And that's those are the questions that we are answering based on the video. Yes. Okay. And and the reason for that is that we went to a digital process rather than mailing out everything, and it just because uh, it just got crazy expensive trying to get it all back and cost you money cost us money and this way it's a few pages is not as bad to print as it is to mail a whole book back that costs about 10 bucks which is unheard of are we expected to mail that to you because i thought in one no of the what i would do is i would you know scan it in and e email it and put it into the in the transition case study, you can upload as many documents as you want. So upload your Vonland uh, teacher form 
it's a you scan it. In fact, you could get a scan app for your phone and it'll scan into your phone as a PDF and then you can just send it that way. Yeah. That's what I would suggest. And if you can do it online and, and create a, if you have Apple, <laughs> if you have a Mac, you could take that form and use the text tool and preview and you could do it all online. You don't even have to do print it out. You could do it all online and save it as a export it as a PDF file. If oh. you have a Mac. Yeah. Okay. Because with Macs, let me uh, pull up a I'll find that. So are you saying if we have a Mac, we can do the Vinland or the Vinlin um all online without having to print anything. Yeah, I was going to show you how to do that. I was going to go to the. It might be it. It might be easier to print, but you know, if you don't want to print it, it's no big deal. Um, so we'll go to your class. We'll pull up the teacher form. All right, might be helpful if I did that. So you would download this. And then what you can do, if you're on a Mac, this is, this is why I love Mac so much, but um, you can take Go up here to tools and show the toolbox. Toolbox. Annotate. See there's text, this little text box. So you're wanting to, um, that's a scoring criteria, never mind. Let's go down to where you score. So we're going to score this. It's, it's harder, but it, you don't have to do it if you don't want to do it. Um, uh, annotate text box. And so you could drag it over and you could put say like you want to do two there. So you go to two. You see how that you can do that. It just takes it's longer to do that. <clears throat> then you could print it out or not print it out. And then you can just once you get it all done, you can <laughs> export it as a PDF and say completed blah, blah, blah. And then say completed Vineland and save it. Then you can send that to me that way. But I'm a little lazy. I just print it and just do it, hand mark it, then scan it and send it that way. Okay. Either way. Can you clarify? You said all 24 pages, right? Right. Right. Uh, you don't have to do the. The maladaptive section. But you, yes, all, all the rest of it. You don't have to do the maladaptive. If they're older, some of these like fine motor is only for, um, or gross motor is only for younger kids, like five or so. Look at what it's for. Um, but I've had students that were so physically unable to do this that gross motor was, was an issue for them. Uh, but if you're doing your child and you're in gross motor, you don't have to do the gross motor page. 
or the fine motor page, if you look at that and see, they don't need to do it. Don't worry about it. Um, so normally, would this be done through observation? Of the actually, station? it's more like a an interview. Um, I would interview. You would interview the teacher or the parent. Um, the teacher would, uh, you would interview the teacher for this conference, a teacher re score report form. Um, then there's a parent form. Uh, so interviews, um, you don't have to deal directly with a student. This is, uh, this is a, not a direct assessment. This is a interview uh, assessment. It's indirect. So are you suggesting we watch that Peter video instead of doing our own kid? All I'm saying that I'm just giving you an option. If you don't have somebody that you can use as a case study, um, Peter, the, the graduating Peter video is an excellent um, video to use. And the reason why I, he's uh, has Down syndrome and he has um, intellectual disability and some other things going on. And so it's a real good case. Have any of you seen the um, Educating Peter video? That was him in third grade. And then they did another one of him in high school. And um, it's excellent. Both of those together make an excellent uh, case study of a student with a significant disability. It's just an option. You don't have to use it. You can use other people. <clears throat> I've just given you another option. So what do we actually need to do on the Vineland uh, website that we wrote? The Vineland, the, what it provides for you is the manual. The Q, um, the Q Global just provides you access to the manual. That's all it does. You're um, for the for the scoring the Vineland and uh, administering the Vineland. You need to do that hand scored rather than. Um, and I sent you in the um, over here in D2L in. I'll find it for you. There is materials for module four, Vonland materials. There are appendix G and H and appendix B through E. These are going to have your standard scores and your uh, uh, ranges where you're going to find that. That's going to be there and that information. Um, but the manual, how to give the test, how to uh, how you score the test, the basils, the ceilings, and those kind of things, all that information is in the Vanyan manual that is on, at the Q Global. So we're not going to use the Q Global for the score? No. I didn't. We didn't get access to that. We just got access to the manual. Okay, so we after we do that, then we you want us to hand score that. And then um, I also see where it says be informal adaptive behavior. Is that all part of that or is that something separate? Right. Right, let's go back to materials for module four and other materials for module four. You'll find the informal adaptive behavior inventory right here. And the reason why you're looking at a standardized one and a non-standardized process. I want you to kind of have a, 
uh, look at both. So when you see the two, you'll see how it's different. See? So then we just take the information from those two. Right. To complete just like a summary of the. Right. You're, you're writing up a, a, um, a, an adaptive behavior report. And so I've provided you under this section here. Um, I had, maybe it's back. Forget where I put it. But it's. Uh, Dr. Kevin, I think you put in an email to us what you're looking for. Maybe that's what it was. It was I was the, just going to say, you emailed us the, the, the blank adaptive report. Yeah, okay. That's, I couldn't remember if I put it, I can put it in the content too. So I might have put it here in module three. Nope. I, yeah, I, now I remember. Thank you for reminding me. I'm a little brain dead this summer since we're selling our house and moving and everything. It's just been kind of crazy. So sorry about that. But we can either use that, the patent, or it said we could use the informal checklist, checklist as well. Yeah. Okay. Either one. Uh, just so you have two. Does that make sense? Yes. Dr. Kevin, I'm having trouble scoring, hand scoring the violin three. Uh, I got, you know, I have the everything, all the, I thought they were all scores. I went back like three times. I can't figure out, will that be in the manual on Q Global? I'm sorry. So the, uh, what was the last part? Okay. That, would the manual tell me how to score it exactly? Yes. Okay. And um, so, Let's pull up that the uh, Vineland thing. There it is. Okay, so let's look at um, when you get all your um, raw scores. So you've what you've done is that you've added up all the scores. Let's just take uh, don't do section C maladaptive behavior. That's the one you don't do. Um, so let's say find motor. You start off and you've got a student that gets all twos on the fine motor. That's 26 times two, that's 50, 52, correct? So your, um, your raw score for fine motor would be 52, correct? So then you would go to the, um, where you would find and calculate that raw score of 52 with the age, that's under the, um, where you, you use the, there it is. That's where you use the, Let me uh, get back to four. The appendix is here. That'll tell you the standard scores. You find the uh, 
けど。So see here, you got your、uh, no, the norms and the scores. So you would say、um, for a student that is. Age two to two and a half, two point three, under communication. If they had a、um, a one, you'd see that's a V score, a Vineland score, standard score of nine. Does that make sense? So you would find the raw score for the age. And then go to the far left and find the V score, and transfer that to your your、uh, document. And it just explains it all in the Vonlin manual. How you get the scores? Okay. Thank you. Okay. What else? Anything else? Any other、um, item that we need to talk about? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a lot of reports and papers and back yeah, and forth. And I'm yeah. just really confused on what kind of goes together. So for on、okay. the syllabus number six, it says short research paper on adaptive behavior. Is that another paper that we have to write this week? Yeah, that I, <laughs> I was trying to. Okay, sorry.、Um, have anybody started it yet? No.、Okay. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I,、uh, um, I did. I finished it. You finished it. Good for you.、Um, it's just I just wanted you to conceptualize, put it all together, and just say what is adaptive behavior and why is it important. Isn't that what you did for your report, your paper? Yes, I I just read over the different things that you assigned and、right. wrote a few pages on it. And I was given this course a couple of years ago, and I've been making changes to it slowly as we go through. But、um, that was a holdover from previous times, so I, I apologize. I've been trying to be more refining and understanding to get the work done. So. Um, so do we have to do it? I took three hours to do that midterm, which didn't count. <laughs> I'm very sorry. And the, here's here's the thing. Sattler sent out their new book, kind of like three weeks before class started, and said, "Oh, by the way, we have a new edition." And getting that, reading that book, and trying to get it transferred over. And then I thought I had made the、uh, made the corrections to the midterm and put it in, and I didn't get the twenty two transferred into the D two L, and so I lost it in the Everworld somewhere, and、um, so, and I'm very sorry for that. I wish I could give you those three hours back. I truly, truly do. Can you take away that short paper then? Yeah, I was going to say I won't be mad. <laughs> If you did here, here's the thing: If you did the midterm, you don't have to do this adaptive behavior paper. How's that work? If you, if I'd rather not, do the midterm. That works out fine. I, I would、question. too. I would rather open the midterm back up. If you want me to do that, I can do that. Uh, uh, those okay. I'll give you the option. Um, what I'll What I'll do is I will send you guys a link to a、um, a Google form, and it'll put your name and you tell me the option you want. And if you want the、um, the midterm and not the、um, adaptive behavior paper, I'll let you do that option. If you want the adaptive behavior paper and not the midterm, I'll do that option. Does that sound fair? I just want、yes. to make it better for、Thank、you guys. You. 
Okay, so um, so since Mrs. Gleason, since you did that already, you don't have to worry about it, right? You're done. Oh, I'm I have a hundred other things to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So I, I will. <laughs> I'll just open it up and. Rather than send a form, here's the thing. I'll open it up, and if you take the midterm, I'll do that. If you don't take the midterm, I'm making the assumption you're doing the adaptive behavior paper. Does that work? What if we've already turned in the midterm? It was prior to you taking it off. Um, I will give you. I will give you the credit. For, you don't have to do the adaptive behavior paper. Right, but do you show that I've done the midterm? Yes. Oh, okay, even though you had taken it off, I didn't know if it would make Yeah, it's just, it's just uh, hid from you guys, not, it's not, um, it's not hidden from me, it's just hidden from you guys. Okay. And I'll fix that. Okay, perfect. Okay, I just wanna make it better, I'm sorry, and you know, trying to do an assessment class in four weeks. And one of the requirements of this class is to look at low incidence disabilities. That's a lot of stuff. If you think that's a lot of stuff for you guys, that's a lot of stuff for me too. And I've got to think that through. And how do I get that information to you in a way that doesn't kill you? And I don't want to kill you. I want you to have a good class, so. Okay, I will say I might not have liked it when I was doing it, the uh, the paper that you had us do for legal frameworks, but I'm actually yeah. glad that you did because I doubt that I would have gone through there and read every one of those as thoroughly as I had to, to you know, do the paper. So I right. think that was helpful or right, from my side. And see, Della, you'll use that in your future practice, won't you? See, that's the whole purpose of that was understanding the dynamics of those different small, you know, all those disabilities, that's less than 2% of the population that we deal with. It's huge. It's so small. But we have to know that stuff. We're, uh, we're, we, universally, we have to know that stuff. And so that's why I did that. So thank you for that feedback. So I will fix that for you guys. Is there anything else that you need from me? Can you clarify quickly? So the case study that we're not doing or the midterm, either one is- Midterm or the, the adaptive behavior uh, paper. Not is that the, the one that was assigned at the beginning of the semester? No, the low incidence case study is still a requirement. It's the adaptive behavior paper, which is okay. uh, writing about adaptive behavior. The case study is still doing it. And really, for it, I, I want to be real. Um, let me find that. Again. All I want you to do is answer these seven questions for the adaptive behavior case study, for the low incidence disabilities case study. Just to answer these seven questions. So you can do uh, number it one through seven and answer it with your uh, explanation. And number two, listen, describe the educational needs. Number three, why, uh, and I'm good with that because I'm a guy. I like bullets or numbers. Um, is that going to make it easier rather than writing, writing a narrative? Can, yes. Can we yep. go over number four for fun? Number four? Yeah, just for fun. Okay. Transitioning from K to 12 environment is a change of placement. It is a change of placement. So 
that requires that you use current evaluation data. Don't you have to have current evaluation data to change placement? Isn't that a requirement under the idea? You can't make a change of placement without a current evaluation. Now, let's talk about what is an evaluation. Is it a, a group of tests? Or is it a collection of data, enough current data to make a good decision? Which is it? Current data. It's, cur it's a collection of data, enough data to make a good decision. So um, some of you have taken some other assessment classes and you talked about the uh, review of existing evaluation data. Is that familiar to you? The reads. Um, do you always do you always go back and do testing under you while using a read, or do you just collect data? So, and then a read is considered um, current evaluation data, is it not? So, therefore, when you see this you use current evaluation data. Now here's something that's interesting is that if a child graduates and goes to college and they had an IEP in high school and they were tested through with the IQ test and achievement test six years ago, but you've used READ, do you think that they'll accept that information for a 504 committee in college? They won't, it has to be within the last three years. So it's kind of like, would it be nice to get more current uh, test information? Do you need more current test information? With Damon, he's had a 49 IQ for let's say, for 12 years. Do we need to do anything else additional for him to find the IQ? No, it's gonna be pretty stable. So just use a read data. Um, if you need additional information, so I should have put that statement there. If you need additional information, comma, Create an evaluation plan for Damon. So if you do not have enough data, what kind of testing would you do for Damon so he could uh, move from the K-12 environment to the adult environment, post K-12? You might say a vocational testing. You might say the TAG. You might say a transition assessment. You might say, a current um, adaptive behavior test. Um, and that might be what you need to do for him to have current information. Did that help? Could yes. you also in the case study, it mentioned that in preparing for his transition plan and that they had administered in a speech, physical therapy and occupational therapy assessments focusing on the skills and equipment needed. And I was just gonna include that, would that be appropriate? Absolutely, absolutely. Because we know the transfer of, of devices, uh, we make that transfer to the parents and the child like a go talk. If the school district bought it, we can transfer the ownership to the, the child or the parents. Um, so they can use that later on. Now, upkeep, et cetera, would be for the parents and the child to keep, but the school district abdicates that part of the responsibility. They give the device to the kid and they move on, they graduate with it. Transfer the ownership. So yeah, whatever you should fill, and I want, I want to give you guys freedom 
creative, be creative, think about what you might want to do. And if you want to come up with a whole huge plan of action, say new IQ test, new this, new that, why would you need that information? Just tell me why. That's all I'm asking. If that makes sense, we're good to go. Could you clarify question number 26 on the final? 26 on the final. It seems like maybe the, the final choice should be all instead of none. Uh, it should have been three. I'm sorry. It's uh, why three things must you must consider when assessing a child with a TBI. I'll fix that right now. See, I can make plenty of mistakes, sorry. So are we, if you look at this, this is a, oh, it's supposed to be a multiple select. I'm sorry. I'll fix it. I'll fix it actually. Because the bottom one seems like it should be all of the above instead of none. Right. Unless what, what, this one was supposed to be a multiple select. Uh, as you can tell that I like multiple select ones, right? So we'll fix this. I'll just make it easy. Awesome. That's what we thought. <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be a multiple select and you were to select these three. That would have worked. Okay. And, and I, and if, if you know, if you've taken my test before, you know, I like multiple selects because that way it makes you think through the question differently. And this, I'll just fix it this way. This makes it easier. So yeah, I'll fix it on the other there's two classes. So this one's fixed now and I'll fix it in the other one. All right. Sorry about that. My bad. At least you know we're looking at it and trying yeah, hard. You know, I know you guys are. And I appreciate you guys. You don't know how much. Dr. Cavett, I have a question about on the syllabus in module okay. one. Okay. Um, e says, so D is the low incidence case study, but then it says low incidence exam due at the end of the course. Is that the same thing as the final exam or is that something different? Yeah, it's a final exam. It's just stupid. That it, um, it has been the key assessment for this, cor this course uh, for several years. And I just named it final exam because we're in the process of moving it away from it. So it really focuses, if you notice, it focuses on uh, the low incidence disabilities, does it not? The, the test. So it's, it's the same thing, sorry. Does that help? 
Yes, that's exactly what I needed to know. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're, we're good. Sorry about that confusion. Okay, it's fixed now. Question 26 is fixed on both sections. Yay! Okay, anything else? Yeah, there's a question in the comments that says, does the final cover everything from the course? Sorta, but it covers more the, uh, covers more. Let's look through each of the questions so you can see them. They're right here. Um, so, in order for a student to be diagnosed with ID, which of the following statements are true, so it's a multiple choice. Uh, what's the concern of standardized tests? So it does consider, uh, look at, I just got a, a little note from Becky saying, she says, hi. Um, in order for this uh, concern for students with blindness and vision impairments, um, hearing impairments, hearing impairments, um, some autism stuff, TBI, uh, another multiple choice about lang acquire language. This is about uh, auditory impaired. Um, then this is about the bell curve. These questions are about the bell curve. And I could send you a bell curve with all the Z scores and percentile ranks, would that be helpful? Say yes. Yes. Yes, please. I will do that. I've got I found it. I've all got the it. answers in the Sattler book. Uh, there was maybe a handful that I had to Google, but the Sattler book gave us even the bell curve, the Z uh, scores, the T scores. Yes. Great. The what, page, what page is that on in the Sattler book? Or do you know it off by, by chance? That depends on which version. Yeah, oh. I, want to, I want to say it was chapter two was where it was talking about all the scores. Okay, well, um, I'll look at both books and I'll send you the chapter, but I'll also send you one of mine that I have. That Page has that. 50, 53 in the old version. 53 in six edition? Yes, sir. Okay. The new Sattler book doesn't have any of the bell curves. The new Sattler doesn't? No, sir. Okay, well, I, I will I will send you a bell curve with all the standard score information, Z scores, T scores, and you look at that and it'll tell you all these answers. Perfect. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, Here's more about TBI, orthopedic impairments. So it's mostly about the, the uh, disability categories, low incidence. Um, and they're all objective, they're not um, written responses. So try to make it a little bit easier than having to write. I think it's too hot to think sometimes. <laughs> I like the multiple choice, thank you. Or multiple selects or, or whatever, yes. Like here's the factors that affect validity of a test. So there you go, see? It's multiple select. Okay. But I'll send that to you as soon as we get off the, the um, call now, okay? Yes, thank you. And when is all this due? I thought I saw something that said July 5th. The, the, June, June 30th at 11.59 okay. p.m. Or earlier is always better. Okay. I thought something said July 5th, and I was like, that's kind of late. Oh, I wish. But and no, June. The adaptive, the adaptive paper says July 5th on it. The, yes, which one? I knew something did. The adaptive paper, if you go to content. Um, oh, and click on well, it, that's a mistake. It's supposed to be June 30th. Oh, I got really excited that maybe everything could be due July 5th. That's well, why I'm asking. When's it no, all due? June 30th. That's the last day of class. Uh, and I'm no longer at MSU after that date. Oh, okay. you are leaving too. 
Oh, yep. wow. Oh, Becky's going. Right. I she got that email. <laughs> and I asked if you were gone. I asked her if you were going too. And she's like, yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, where are uh, you moving? Got to go. So. Where are you moving? <laughs> we're moving to Mineola, Texas. Oh, fun. Well, as a parting gift, maybe you should be extra generous when grading. I'm just saying. <laughs> I am. I am a pussycat when it comes to grading. <laughs> Your last class. So. Speaking of which, um, I've noticed that I don't have like grades on any of the. I'm in um, process. I'm doing okay. it. So okay. I'm sorry. Well, I just, no, no problem. It's just some of my peers had gotten theirs done um, quite a while ago and I still didn't. So I was just worried that there was a problem with my, my system. No, it's me. <laughs> it's uh it's called packing you know we've got boxes everywhere but fortunately we sold the house so we're good to go adventures yes new adventures and if Enjoy. any if any of you are close and want some books i left a ton of books up up there on uh, the third floor of the uh, education building if you want to come by and dig through and get some if you're close by. I'm not taking them all with me. I just want to say thank you. I had you in special ed law in the fall. And oh, you that do? was an amazing you class. Did? Yeah. That was a that's always a fun class. I you know I'm kind of a nut. I love sped law. <laughs> it's a fun class. Yeah there's a lot I highlighted in that book. I kept that one. Yeah, Mitch is my uh, good friend, actually. I knew him when I was CEC member. Uh, I was CEC president, so Mitch yes. was a board member. Yeah, that was a good Zoom we had. With yeah, he was fun. That was good. good. So thank you so much. Thank you for all your learning and support. Thank, thank you. And best thank of you. luck in the move and to you. Thank you. And if there's nothing else, guys, I appreciate you very much. And you guys have a great rest of your time. And email me, call me, whatever you need to do. And we'll get in touch. Thank okay? you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you.